I'm Richard McNally. I work uh, for SNV. I'm the Red Global Coordinator and also Coordinator for Climate Smart Agriculture. Uh, I'm based in Vietnam um, and the project that we are working on as part of this study is the Katien Landscape Project. Uh, Katien is just uh, north of Ho Chi Minh City and it's the, one of the biggest and uh, best known national parks in Vietnam. Uh, we started the project in uh, 2009 uh, and the idea was to try to reduce the degradation uh, and deforestation happening around the, the Katien National Park. Uh, I think in terms of the challenges, uh, particularly early on, was the difficulty for the local communities and the, the national authorities to understand the, the ideas around red and particularly how to uh, understand the technical components of a red project, uh, things like MRV, um, uh, carbon accounting uh, and so forth. So initially there was quite a lot of um, uh, a more sort of cautious approach from the, our, our government counterparts and the communities in terms of uh, implementing this project. Uh, we've, done, we've done a series of capacity building with the uh, provincial and district authorities around uh, RED um, and at the same time we worked with the communities particularly around looking at uh, agriculture, livelihoods, forest protection, enforcement. But quite early on in the project we decided that um, the economics didn't really add up, that the, the potential benefits from RED credits was quite far below the potential benefits from uh, rubber expansion. In this area, there's a lot of rubber expansion. So trying to work with the communities to try to change their behavior um, and try to encourage them to protect the forests and stop rubber expansion was a major, was a major problem. Um, we carried out a series of uh, economic analysis of the area and quite soon it became quite clear that the that red as an economic incentive to protect the forest probably wasn't strong enough. Um, so in, after that, we changed our approach to how we worked in this site. Early on in 2012, we, we changed track. So we started to look at how we could um, integrate RED into more uh, the district and the provincial level development patterns that this, I think everyone refers to as green growth. Um, so I think very much what uh, needs to be looked at is how we can look at RED as part of a broader package um, of development how we put that into practice or how the negotiators put that into practice is probably quite challenging uh, given the context of the international red agreement but certainly the in terms of application or implementation on the ground there's a real need to see how to integrate red further into the existing development plans and practices that's from our experience I think it very clearly highlights the major challenges of, of working on RED. So it provides a nice basis to try to move forward uh, in terms of how to work on RED in the future. So I think it's, a, yeah, it's an excellent um, collation of different case studies that we can build on.